What's going on everyone? Christian here with Cranking with Christian and we are out here on the local reservoir in the kayaks. I'm out here in my brand new Hobie Pro Angler testing out my brand new Garmin right here. It's a Garmin 93 SV UHD and I'm sure you guys can see right back here is Steven. He is pedaling around. I'm kind of teaching him how to um, read fish finders today and uh, like uh, just showing him around to the lake, getting him used to the kayak, teaching him how to use the kayak. But anyways, what we are doing today is we are going around graphing a bunch of spots on this lake. I've got some spots that I want to mark on this fish finder because of just getting it ready for any kayak tournaments if I want to come out here and catch some fish. So anyways, we're marking some spots, finding new spots on this lake, kind of just exploring, trying to find some offshore spots when we can. But we're going to be showing you guys what all we look for whenever we are looking for new spots. So with that being said, let's hop into uh, some of the info that we look for. So this lake especially, um, it's pretty plain around the edge. As you guys can see, it's pretty consistent with dropping off at the same levels. There's a few drop offs around this lake, but most of them are just these rocky banks with a little bit of brush here or there, nothing special. But as you guys can see, there's really not much up here. There's brush that hangs over top of the water over here, but then you have these two trees right here with nothing else around. Um, for me, I look for that specific stuff on the bank where there's not much cover anywhere else on the bank, but you've got these two trees right here that stick out in the water. And personally, I've had a little bit of luck here certain times of the year, certain times I don't catch any fish here, but certain times of the year I can catch fish right here on these trees. And this is just a good thing to look for out here in the bank so this is one thing we look for we're going to move on down this bank and show you guys a little bit more about uh what else we look for on these banks all right so we are coming up on another piece of structure down this bank and this is kind of something that we look for too um one thing i will mention is this time of year where it's still cold out the water temp right now is 42 it's cold out it's like a 40 degree day it's supposed to get up in the 50s but i don't know if it will but right here when the water's down you can see all this stuff on the bank and basically when i'm looking for new spots i'll find like i mentioned back there that isolated stuff with nothing else around it and i will go and once the water's back up and it's a good time to fish i'll go and i'll fish this area and then from there i will kind of eliminate it keep the waypoint or eliminate it based on what i find but as you guys can see right here now this is a good area to fish. I do not know why it's not focusing, but as you guys can see, there's all this brush here in the water and then there's these huge rocks in this water too with isolated stumps and stuff around here too. And that's really what'll hold fish because you got the, you got the uh, trees to hold fish under it. So it creates shade. I found out if you get around all these um, big rocks and stuff in the water, fish like hanging around those too. So right here is a really good spot to try and just have as possibly one of your good spots for when the water comes up and you want to start catching fish. So this, I did not realize how many big rocks were around it when I first found the spot last year. So this will probably end up being one of my go-to spots if I had to guess when the time comes. But it looks good. You have all these big rocks right up here. You've got a tree that's in the water and it's going to be a few foot out in the water. I do not know why it's not focusing again, but there you guys go. You guys can see that tree right there. And then up here, even though it's not focusing, there is more. So there we go. Now it's focusing. So here's that tree in the water. And then up here, there's all this more brush and big rocks here. So we're gonna get up here to these rocks and then kind of show you guys around. So here we go. Here's this bank section that I was talking about. You have all these really big rocks right here on the bank. I've got a few fish off these rocks when you're in the middle of summer. I feel like rocks either hold heat in real well for the cold times of the year. And then when it gets in the warmer times of the year, rock kind of cools it down because it lets stuff filter through it more. Um, I know it kind of just sounds that they kind of are contradictory because when it's cold, they hold water, they heat, hold heat in, but when it's hot, they kind of let heat out. Um, I don't really know. That's just my own theory of it, but you guys can see there's these huge rock piles right here. Um, and it's just a big spot that would be really good for cover. 
it's just a big rock pile, a drop off on the back side with isolated big rocks on the back or isolated boulders on the back side. On the front side, it drops straight off to a muddy bottom and with isolated rocks. And you can see it's all the way down this bank right here. So it's all the way down. And this would just be a good section to try because of those rocks being here. Now what we're doing is we're just got my, uh, we got my Garmin on side imaging right now. And we are just pretty much going around, pedaling around a few of these points and stuff and the very little points on this lake. And when you are going down these points, we're just looking for these drop offs and stuff like that. So there's one spot right up here off this point, not going to exactly show you where it is, but basically it goes from a sandy point that comes out to about 15 feet off the bank. And it's only about a foot deep, 15 foot off the bank. And then it drops off from a foot deep to about 13 foot deep. And it's a long point, and it's also along an old railroad bed. So those fish are sitting right on that point, and there's some um, grass on the bottom of that point. There's some brush on the bottom of that point and that drop off. And it's just a good spot to start at. Caught some fish there. It's a pretty good spot to fish in the midsummer when you know those fish are deep. Um, another thing, like I just mentioned, is on a lot of fish finders, you'll see these long points or these long uh, lines on the contour lines on the GPS that say exactly what they are. So here, there's the contours that go through the middle of the lake and it shows the original creek bed. And it also shows the original railroad bed that went through this lake too before it was a lake. So I'll show you guys that real quick. So as you guys can maybe see on here, I'm not positive, right here it says submerged minor creek bed submerged railroad bed so right up through here you can just pretty much go back and forth fish down that submerged railroad bed and that creek bed and basically there are bound to be fish somewhere on it so if you go down that creek bed and you're fishing it's about probably 20 to 30 foot out there and you're fishing back there on that creek bed you want to go down you want to scan down the entire creek bed basically and just look for some type of structure down in it so personally i would look for some type of rock on it um, you're bound to find some type of big rocks on it or a rock pile out on it um, and then also look for any type of brush down in it they sink trees and lakes all the time that odnr does or the dnr does and also um, people come out and sink trees and lakes all the time too so you're bound to find some, some type of structure over there. Now, lastly, the only other thing that we really scan for is we go, we scan out in open water for any type of isolated brush in open water and about 10 foot or deeper. And then we also scan for rock piles. And that's one thing I'm trying to learn this year is fishing out deeper water. So that's why we're really out here scanning. So I'm gonna find these isolated rock piles and start fishing with deep jigs, like heavier jigs in deep water, swing heads, um ned rigs drop shots and then even like jig worms and stuff like that on these deep water deep water rock piles or brush piles it's a good way to catch fish in the summer and that's really when i start to struggle is in the summer when it gets really hot and all the fish, fish are out deep so that's what we're out here scanning for and hopefully able to find and catch some fish on this year so I know this isn't like a huge tutorial on catching fish or finding all these spots, just some basic stuff that I look for while I'm doing this because I'm in the middle of learning the offshore scanning. Um, I've been up on bank scanning and brush scanning and stuff for about eight, two years now that I've been doing that. But offshore scanning, this is my first year doing it, trying to figure it out. So any little knowledge I learn as I do it, is what I will let you guys know too and kind of go over in some of these videos. And I will definitely be talking about some of this information as I make videos and I'm actually out here fishing offshore. Now I know there is a big rock pile somewhere out here in the lake. We're gonna scan for it. Um, probably won't show too much of that because it's just gonna be us pedaling around looking for it and marking it. But that's just gonna be a spot that's probably gonna be a primary area that I'm gonna fish this summer. So anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this little bit of a informational or informative type video about what we're doing when we're scanning for uh, structure and trying to find new spots. We'll have more videos upcoming. We got some kayak tournament videos upcoming and yeah, we'll just go from there. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video.